Hey, it's Brett. Thank you for stopping by or returning to my channel. So a lot to cover today between the Booker long list. I also wanted to talk to you all about um, some books that are going to be coming out in August to put on your, well, now it's end of summer reading list. So uh, stick around. Okay, I want to preface this um, whole thing to start with to say I have a total cold. You might be able to hear it. Um, and I was going to wait to do this video in another day, but I just, while everything is fresh in terms of the booker, I wanted to get this up and out there. So anyway, um, if I have to stop periodically and blow my nose, you'll know why. First of all, the booker prize. All right, I, I wasn't um, overall... Uh, I can't say not surprised. There were a lot of surprises, and I think I have three, only three books on my list um, that made it to the long list. Uh, a couple notable exceptions. One was uh, Praiseworthy, which so many people have talked about, and um, I went out and bought the book thinking, oh, I've got to get ready to read this, and not on the list. Still, I'm going to read it because I've had everyone that's read it have said this like they felt like was the biggest omission, just what I've seen so far. For people who have read this, they really felt that something was lost in not putting this on the list. Um, two other omissions that I want to talk about that I was shocked. One was The Road to the Country by Chigozi Obioma. I wish for sure sure, seeing as he was a two-time shortlisted author, that this was going to make it and so that this didn't get up was really surprising to me. You should absolutely still read this book because it's incredible. Um, and the other book was uh, Caledonian Road, which I think was I was mispronouncing the other day. And um, by the way, I'm still doing my read-along. You see this is all tabbed up and ready to go to start this with my group. Again, if you're interested in jumping in on this, despite the fact that it's not on the long list, please email me below at brettsbookstack at gmail.com and I can give you the breakdown. Or if you're on Instagram, you can send me a DM there as well. Okay. Um, as to the rest of it, I, like I said, I read about half of them. I'm going to be clicking over so I can look at stuff as I speak to you. Um, uh, Wild Houses, James, My Friends, um, the safe keep, the safe keep. Oh my God, you guys, I am so excited. This is probably the thing I'm most excited for just because it's been one of my favorite books of the year. Um, Yale Vanderwood was on the Gaze Reading podcast. I just fell in love with her. Um, and so I couldn't be more excited for this book to be on there. And um, just a debut author, the whole thing, everything about this makes me so, 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 so happy. That's the thing I'm, that really I'm most excited about. I'm, I'm really happy for Tommy Orange. Um, the rest of it, like I, I ordered some books today. Um, I ordered an enlightenment today. Uh, I just got Orbital from the library. The other, the two books that surprised me a little bit were Headshot. It was not a book necessarily for me. I read that with my In Real Life book club. And I think it's really um, ingeniously constructed. Um, I just felt a little bit of a remove from it. And um, so that surprised me a little bit. And I really liked Wild Houses um, by Colin Barrett. I thought it was really great. Um, but in terms of Irish authors, there's other people I would have, I think, rather seen make the list. But um, still, again, another debut, and I'm very excited for him in terms of that. And by all means, it's not a bad book in any stretch. It's not even a, it's not even a lukewarm book. It's a very good book. There were just things that I liked a little better. Um, so that's where I am. I'm very excited that... Um, that I that I had read as many books as I had read. There's other years when it's so many unknown authors and it's small presses, and so so you're starting at ground zero. So uh, I I feel like absolutely I'm going to be able to read this whole long list before the awards are announced to have a really clear idea about for me what I'd want to win. Um, the two that seem like you know close runners to me at this moment are James by Percival Everett, Percival Everett and uh, My Friends by Hisham Mater. They're the two that are the strongest um, likely as candidates to me to win the award. But again, that's just based on nothing. Just who knows? Okay, so take that for, for what it is. Um, 
I would love to know your thoughts on the Booker, what you guys thought, if there's things that you thought were missing, um, what do you think of the list overall? I think generally speaking, um, people seem pretty pleased with this list. So certainly, uh, so we'll see. I don't know. Okay, um, so two books I wanted to talk about that are coming out today. Um, this is Tuesday. It's a new release Tuesday here in the U.S. Two things that are being released. One is The Wedding Keeper by Alison Espak. Um, loved this book. I'll talk more about it. I want to do my wrap-up in a few days, but um, totally charming. This is also the in the States, the Jenna's Book Club pick this month, um, but really great, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. Perfect summer book. Um, so that's one. The other thing that looks so interesting to me that's coming out today is Someone Like Us by uh, Dina Magestu. Um, and thank you to Kanap for this. Um, basically, it says Dina Magestu's spellbinding new novel crafts a powerful narrative about race and class and immigration and exile around a transfixing question How well can we ever know those whom we love? Um, so that's out today too. Looking forward to reading this. Side note, I also just want to do a shout out to my hat today. For any of you who have read Long Island Compromise, this is, uh, related to that. So, um, thank you to Random House for this cool hat. Okay, moving on. I almost said, how are we doing on time? Like, <laughs> I don't know why, just because. I have for you guys books coming out in August that I think look particularly interesting that you might want to get ready to add to your TBR. Um, so let's dive in. The first is Napalm in the Heart. Um, Napalm in the Heart, I, I just finished this. It's really interesting. It's a kind of uh, post-apocalyptic novel. It's about a young man who is corresponding in the, it's two parts. The first part, he's corresponding with his lover through a series of letters. Um, then they end up coming together and this, that's kind of the second part of the novel. It, it, it's such a mashup to me of like the road. Somehow I was getting blackout vibes. Um, he has this relationship with his mother. His father has committed suicide. It's, it's a bleak novel. But it's, Paul is a poet, and that comes through on every page. It is some downright exquisite prose, really beautiful, as you can see, as I've marked this all up. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed this. It's a strange thing to say because the novel is very bleak, and yet I was so taken with his writing that... Um, I was just kind of in. It also, I found myself for a book that's not very long, it's like 230 pages and has some pictures in it. It took me well over a week and that didn't bug me. I just was not in a rush to finish it, but I was also enjoying the whole experience while reading it. I don't know what any of that means, except that I was having a really kind of good reaction to the book. So it is, um, like I said, it is heavy, um, but lyrical and, 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 Again, just stunning bros. So that's out August 13th. I will say August 13th seems to be like the windfall of the month for getting everything out. And we're traditionally, this time of the summer or the end of the summer is now, the big summer books have come out. The publishers are getting ready to gear up for the fall. There's a lot of stuff that's slipping through in this month and there's a lot coming out. Also, 813, Man Boobs by Kamel Ajazuddin. Um, Kamel is on Gaze Reading, the current episode that just landed today, which is uh, June 30th. Um, and he is fantastic. I loved this book. I loved this book so much. It, it, first of all, I love a good memoir. I love a good memoir that has humor in it. He is so funny, but it's so moving, so touching, so relatable about growing up in Pakistan, coming to the States, um, being gay, and also having man boobs um, and how he dealt with that. 
loved this, loved this, loved this. Um, and now I don't really need to do it on my wrap up um, next week because you'll know I loved this. But anyway, this comes out 813, get it. it. I just thought it was so fantastic. All right, 86, The Rich People Have Gone Away by Regina Porter. I have never read Regina Porter before. This sounds amazing and thank you to Hogarth for this. This is about a group of New Yorkers who all come together to find a missing woman. It's supposed to address class and race and somehow the pandemic. Um, it sounds really, really interesting. It just got a star review in Kirkus. I'm really looking forward to this one. So the rich people have gone away. All right, um, also on 8.6, And So I Roar, the new novel by uh, Abby DeRay. Uh, I did not read The Girl with a Louding Voice. I had it, I don't know, I was digging for it last night. I couldn't find it. I know a lot of people loved it. Uh, this is the sequel to that book, um, and I, apparently it picks up right where right where that left off. So for those of you who loved that book, um, you're, you're absolutely going to want this one. Uh, and thank you to Dutton for this copy. But that comes out again August 6th. Okay, also at 813 is A Great Marriage by Frances Mays. Um, Frances Mays, you may recognize her name from the book Under the Tuscan Sun, which, you know, her nonfiction story about uh, moving to Italy with her husband and then restoring a home and becoming a part of the community. And then it was made into a movie uh, with Diane Lane. Um, this is a fiction book. Um, it says a broken engagement raises two questions. What makes a great marriage and what do wedding vows really mean? Um, I completely did not know this was coming out. I didn't know that she even wrote fiction, but it looks really interesting. Again, got a star review in Kirkus, so I'm really looking forward to this one. As well as on August 13th is Highway 13 by Fiona McFarlane. Um, it says it's a... McFarlane contemplates the ripple effects of violent crime in 12 intricately layered stories based on an actual string of serial killings in 1990s Australia. But apparently what she does with this book is very similar to Danya Kokovka's Notes on an Execution, uh, which was also about a serial killer and his victims, but it never really dealt with the the killer who was on death's row had dealt with the people around him. And this does this very similar thing. I think this sounds just incredible. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Also out 813th is Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed. This is a reimagining of Hamlet. It's the Lady Macbeth story. And so it looks really fascinating. Um, Zub's covered who is over on Instagram, she also has a um, page here and she's on TikTok. She has said this is one of the best books that she's read so far this year. And um, so I think it looks really, really interesting. The, the UK cover in particular, I think is really arresting to look at. So that looks interesting to me. And then on 820, for those of you who like a vampire story, Rachel Collarcroft's new book, We Love the Nightlife, comes out, which is about two women who meet at a disco um, who are vampires. Uh, and what happens over a, a, a long period of time. I just got a copy of this and I'm, uh, I'm really interested to read it. I think it looks totally fun. It's totally the kind of book for the end of the summer. I'm also so into vampires. Uh, so I think that's going to be a really fun book. On 827, I'm jumping around dates. 827, I'm also really excited for Christopher Isherwood, Inside Out um, by Catherine uh, Bucknell. This is supposed to be like the definitive biography of Christopher Isherwood. I happen to be one of those freaky people who owned and bought all of his diaries and read them, which I thought were amazing. Incidentally, Catherine Bucknell edited all of those um, and she was the one who put those together. So the woman knows him probably better than anybody except maybe Don Bacardi and maybe even better than Don Bacardi. But anyway, uh, uh, it's getting incredible reviews. It's a monster of a book, but that, I, I, I can't wait to get my hands on that. Um, and then 
two more to talk to you about. This comes out August 20th, which is The, Vol the Volcano Daughters by Gina Maria Bellabrera. Um, sh she, again, the same episode um, of Kamel, who wrote Man Boobs. She's also on this episode, which is just landed today on the Gaze Reading Podcast. This is about two sisters who escaped the genocide in El Salvador in the 1920s um, and eventually end up coming to America. But it's their lives. Um, and within that, there are their sisters, their sisters who are, are killed in the genocide, who act as a sort of Greek chorus. Um, it's a really engaging book. She's a lovely writer, and um, it's kind of an epic of these two women and how they get separated and how they come back together. So again, that comes out August 20th. And then finally, also coming out on August 20th is Alif Shafak's There Are Rivers in the Sky. It is from the Booker finalist author of The Island of Missing Trees, an enchanting new tale about three characters living along two rivers, all under the shadow of one of the greatest epic poems of all time. Um, I loved The Island of Missing Trees. I don't know about you guys. I thought it was just a beautiful book. So this was like an event to me. I'm, I'm so excited for this. Um, so again, August 20th. Okay, um, I got through it. Didn't even sneeze. I, I feel like that was a win-win. Um, let me know if any of these sound interesting to you. I'm sure there's other stuff I missed, but like I said, it, it seemed like a lighter month to me. Um, have a great rest of your week, everybody, and um, I'll see you next week with my uh, wrap-up for July, and then I'm also going to possibly talk about what I'm going to read in August. I may throw a few titles in there and just do it all together. Um, I haven't figured that all out yet, but we'll see. And uh, as always, thank you. If you are new here and you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe, and um, I will see you all soon.